Here we go. Emotionally damaged people are always sexually promiscuous. All right, doctor. Let me say this again. Hmm. You if you are traumatized, if you are emotionally damaged, you are promiscuous. And do you want to know why? Dang. Why is that? Emotionally traumatized people require constant validation from others. Mm. You married to a woman who's been traumatized, abuse, abandonment, whatever. When you're not around her for too many days, she has to entertain another man because her trauma dictates constant validation. And constant validation means I must have a man in my personal space. This is, you ever date a woman who was crazy about you? She absolutely loved you, so you thought. It was really addiction. Yeah. When, re- when you finally let her go, when you finally got her to stop stalking you, she ended up with another man like that. Mm, and your damn, ego yes. took a hit. You said, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I know that woman was crazy about me. Crimed in my window, came to my... Ch- you understand? She was... Cr- oh, she was crazy about your presence in her life. And the minute you distanced yourself from her life, she found a replacement without a problem. Emotionally damaged people are promiscuous because they cannot go without constant validation. They need that validation. They need it. What is he talking about? I would love to know your thoughts because I know you be you talking said, about what is he little- talking about? <laughs> First and foremost, I think one of my hot takes is I think hypersexuality and purity are two sides of the same coin. I think we will talk about hypersexual people because that so being promiscuous is not hypersexual. You can't control it. Being hypersexual promiscuous, I don't, I'm not listening to them. Same. Hypersexual, well, you can't control it, cool. But a lot of people don't talk about that purity also, I think, comes from the same type of like trauma and the same type of like, oh, um, emphasis on how your but how what you do with your body and what your body looks like and how valid how you you get validation from people people who are obsessed with being pure it's the same shit you're obsessed with your pussy you're obsessed with your dick you're obsessed with how people view your sexuality and you're mm-hmm. obsessed with saving it for someone special and what that means and what that proves it's very similar to people who like kind of i because i had a point where i was hypersexual and it was due to trauma but i don't but you don't agree with them here no i think that like how someone like sexually I would consider myself promiscuous that's because I want to be I like pleasure I think it's fun I think sex is beautiful I think it doesn't have to stem from what how do you draw the difference between hypersexuality and promiscuity because we mm. we had a whole episode episode six about the word promiscuous in totality mm. uh, when we first started the pot mm-hmm. so I would love to know how you differentiate between mm-hmm. the two for me it's if I feel like I can't like control it like it's like a okay like an incessant thought or incessant desire and that incessant is need. which word hypersexual okay yeah like it's something that is like a part like kind of like a problem you know what i'm saying promiscuous is just like i could go months without having sex i could i could be having sex three times a week promiscuous is my desire and and openness and being sensual my love a love of being naked my love it's cold out and i'm always gonna have my titties or some cleavage out <laughs> like that's who i am so i feel like I do think hypersexuality and trauma can go hand in hand, though. Yeah, like, I know, yeah. But I don't necessarily think it, for example, like a lot of my friends that have experienced trauma, sexual trauma, mm-hmm. are kind of wildly into BDSM. But I realize it's because there's so much consent and control mm-hmm. that's brought back. So it's this safe way to experience dismantling your trauma mm-hmm. mm. um and i really think when people say it in a bad way i mean and let's be honest like before we all understood what the shit was right you're like whoa these people are crazy but it makes sense like being bound being tied the yes no being able to have a safe word mm-hmm. there is so much control in that mm-hmm. um i actually did some i don't want to say the r word but that kind of play and mm-hmm. like Mm-hmm. And we had a lot of fun, but like we made sure that no wasn't the safe word because that might be in the play. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like literally, I remember there was one point where like he was grabbing my wrist super hard and I was like, I got really scared, but I was excited that I was scared. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, damn, like having that safe word is so important because like, yes, the no was part of the whole thing. So I think knowing that I could say my one word, I don't want to say what my safe word is, but just say this one word and it's over. That's a lot of power. I think sex is healing, which is why I don't guess I think it can come from trauma. But if hypersexuality can come from trauma, why can't sexuality also heal? It? What if we take out the sex? 
what if we take out the fact that he's like, as soon as you hop out, of, what about a serial dater? Like, if he's saying that you need the validation and the attention from someone else, what if even we take the whole vagina, dick and vagina, mm -hmm. or vagina, vagina, whatever, what if we take penetration and sex out of it? He's also saying, which perm promiscuous could lead to just relationships with multiple people, mm -hmm. with a lot of people. Sexual relationships, of course, mm -hmm. but when you're dating a lot of people or you jump from one relationship to the next, could that not be seen as someone who is maybe doing that from a trauma response as well because they need the validation of other people? Like, when, I'm, when I heard him say that, a part of me actually was like, of course, at first I don't want to really agree with much of what Dr. Umar has to say, right? Because <laughs> according to him, I shouldn't exist because I'm love, biracial, right? I love Dr. Umar. Um, I would love for him to sit he here with hilarious. it, but uh, yeah. I, I go in with the bias mm -hmm. to not really want to listen, but I listened to this a few times and I was like, I found that even in my relationship, a part of feeling abandoned immediately by my ex when we would constantly break up was me going back to what was safe, whether it be 24-7, whether it yeah. be other partners that I just had in the tuck in my roller dicks. You know what I mean? But I was like, damn, <coughs> is this a part of, and, and I couldn't censor it, but was I there think, trauma with I my dad leaving? I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, I listened to this and I it got me to think, is the, it was the need in that relationship where I kept being, you know, feeling like I was being abandoned and going uh -huh. under someone else. Did that relate at all to maybe my dad not being around for certain times or things like that? Like, I do think that we want to not believe that our trauma mm -hmm. exists in the way we now date or find partnerships or even have sex. Mm -hmm. But the more that I'm talking to people and the more I am looking into it, I'm questioning deeper things about myself too. And mm -hmm. so I listen to this and where y'all are like, mm, yeah, no, I think it leads to this. I found this to be actually, I did actually agree with majority of what he She's had. right about the 